Oh, I grew up in Asia, man. Uh, I've got two brothers and a little sister. I haven't got a dad. My dad ran away when, well, when my mum was, when I was one years old and my mum was pregnant with my brother Tom. Uh, my dad ran away and uh, my mum had to bring us all up basically on her own. And then obviously she had two more kids and then that relationship failed, so forth. Uh, so she's bringing up four kids on her own. You know, it's a hard thing to do. And I was such a little <laughs> growing up. We had the police at the door pretty much every night of the week. I was a right little because <laughs> you didn't have that proper guidance, do you know what I mean? You didn't have that proper thing. And I didn't respect me mum because I just wanted to be a little um, uh, We was only pretty much one, one of the only black families in Hazelmere. Um, so you can imagine what sort of life was like growing up in a town years ago, being one of the only sort of black kids around there. You sort of got a lot of abuse. So in order to do that, you're looking after the older, well, your little brothers and sisters and that, you know, you've got to sort of get a certain way about you as you're getting older. So uh, fighting was the way for me, I think. It, just, it become sort of like a, a certain part in my life when I thought, I ain't f***ing this no more. And I sort of wanted to do something about it. So rather than just running away from the people that were saying it, I sort of took action with it and started realising that I could do something about it after I managed to nail the guy it first time and done it. Yeah, no, it was, it was, yeah, it was a bit tough growing up, man. But it's everything now. I respect my mum 100% for everything she's done because I wouldn't be here now otherwise and you know, look what we've done and she supports us every every step of the way mate. Yeah, started kickboxing, my very first club, enjoyed it, um, went on a bit of bit of a bender, you know, doing drugs as you do, you know, as a kid, getting sidetracked a lot, going out a lot and then I thought no, get back into it again and then I started at another club, same thing, got bored, didn't take it too serious. And then I found my club, which is the club I'm still with now, which is Coliseum. Uh, started there. And ever since there, then my first amateur fight. I, I, I lost my first amateur fight, but it went all the way. I was against a good guy anyway, but it was a test for me. I even went out the night before that, you know, hungover, coming to the fight hungover. Didn't take it serious. So I didn't realise how far I could ever go. So I just took the next fight, at which, which I drew. So I started like redeeming myself a little bit. Took the next fight, I won it. And I said to myself, right, from now, I'm just going to focus on this. I'm just going to carry on winning. And I did, and I haven't lost yet. Every fight I've had, I've won. Touch gloves, get ready for war. So you heard it there, guys. UK one rules, so exciting. The one knee in the clinch. But what we saw before, the way the guys get around that is the way they hold and then move, isn't it? We can see more knees if they're clever. Here we go, you ready? And here's the You're thing, ready? as they Let's... jockey for position, it's hard to you know keep up with the action. However, say in action, Lewis King immediately goes into the clinch off a foot jab. That's right, both guys jostling for position at the moment. Colin will be almost looking for a takedown. That's right, I mean, as, as we know, that won't happen here, but short chopping punches from King, and he's really fired up here. These are tough, tough body shots. Now, it looks like Lewis King is getting better at the exchanges, and will be, he's, you know, he's ducking his head. That's definitely not something that you want to do, because you can catch uppercuts, but more importantly than that, you don't see where the punches are coming from, like that doozy right there. Rob, straight left hand through the channel. Big left hand. Lewis King, a dangerous player. Will be looks... Shaky on his feet, to say the least. Hey, I, think like King's to me. I think King is going to follow straight up to this. Look for the finish. I'm sure he can sense the kill. Big right hand. He's down. This could all be over. He's going to get another count, another chance. But Two, Pierre, the problem three, for Wilby, he's not had an four, opportunity to get into this five, fight at all, has he? Six, Lewis King, seven, from the outset of the belt, was in me. his face, working the clinch, and then from okay. there, just a barrage of punches, and he went body, leg, I mean, excuse me, body, head, body, head, and he caught him clean. Rob, Lewis King has come out as if he really feels that he is invincible. And he's played it that way as he takes victory. Referee Grant Wallman calls a halt to this fight in favour of Louis King due to three knockdowns in the three first round. Yeah, it had to happen. Colin Wilby, in a nutshell, just never got into it, did he? Well, here's the thing. Hopefully, we'll bring him back and actually see what he has to offer. However, tonight, the story is Lewis King. He went out there, and I tell you what, he took the fight. Look at this replay. Solid punches over the top of the guard of Wilby. Big uppercuts here. He just doesn't stop. He was like a predator tonight. And he, once he spelt the blood, he went in for the kill. Left hand rocked him, as you said. Big rights and left came in underneath. There's that sweet left, Rob. And I mean, 
three and zero at the moment at, at this novice level. He is looking invincible, isn't he? He certainly is. He looks phenomenal, in great shape, good movement. And as you said, he smelt the kill. Colin Wilby, yeah, we took that fight. We had, I, remember, I remember we were trying to get onto the show for ages. Uh, my instructor said to me, no matter what I do, I'm going to get you onto Code Rage or get you onto UCMA, whatever. Um, and then we had a call from David Donald saying, uh, do you still, does your boy still want to fight? We got him a slot against this guy called Colin Wilby. Um, we knew he'd had lots of, well, so many boxing fights, bare knuckle fights or whatever. So we knew he bare knuckle fight and the lot. He, you know, he's, he's very well, very well experienced fighter. So we took the fight, two weeks notice on this one. So I was a bit nervous, because I thought, bloody hell, it's my chance to get in and make, 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 a, make a big thing about it. So I thought, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it. So I took the fight, tried my arse off for that two weeks. Solid, man, just for the fight. Had the fight, got in there with him. One minute, 21 seconds of the first round, mate, I destroyed him, took him apart. I dropped him three times and the referee stopped the fight. So since then I thought, right, now, it's, now I'm really fucking feeling confident about myself now. The confidence I had before, I didn't have enough confidence in myself, so I didn't know what I could achieve. And then when I got in there with someone with that much experience, which is way over my experience, because this is my, that would, have, that would have been my third fight, my third professional fight. So, and it was in four ounce MMA gloves, four ounce MMA gloves. So for, as a K1 fighter, four ounce MMA gloves, it was a big step to take from what I was used to, which is 10 ounce boxing gloves. So for me, I was well nervous about everything. Uh, I didn't want to mess up, it was a big show, one of the biggest in England, one of the biggest in England, so I didn't want to mess up nothing, so I, I took the fight and did it, and you know, and since then I enjoyed it, and I, I, I never looked back since, mate, I just carry on looking for more fights. There's <laughs> a knockdown, go to a neutral side of the cage, then I'll pick up the count, wait for me to restart the fight. One flinch and stare down from both men. Right back. Here we go, you ready? You ready? Let's fight. Straight oh. away, King across the cage, instantly throwing strikes. Oh, Rogers looked as if he was rocked a little bit there. Body shots, and oh, oh. King goes down to the ground. He gets straight back up. This is pillar to post. King wasted no time of coming flying across the ring. Rogers did well to survive the early storm, and he's looking to come back now. And he's got to look to recollect a little bit. And a big knee coming in from King there. What an action packed start. Nice teeth and a jab over the top. Oh. Oh. King lands a beautiful shot. I was just about to say, Sean Rogers looks as if he's composed himself really nicely. Then Louis King comes back with a big overhand right. But a standing eight count. Is his head still full of clouds or has it cleared? Wow, oh. a big swinging punch by King. He's firing that left to the body and a big loop in right. He's throwing that right again and again. Rogers needs to be careful. Oh, big knee to the face of King from Rogers. Well, Louis King is throwing big overhand rights, but the, the, the little mistake I see by throwing the overhand is King is looking down at the floor when he does it. If Rogers actually sees this, all he has to do is pop an uppercut. King straight in again, throwing everything he has at his opponent. Left jab catches Rogers. Rogers on the back foot, composing himself quite well. Rogers needs to pop that uppercut every time King throws a oh! Huge shot, and I'm not sure he'll be getting up from this one, gents. Wow, King has thunderous right hand. Six, Rogers seven, up to his feet somewhat gingerly. Eight, Referee Grant Waterman oh, obviously going to assess if his man's clear to, to carry on. Well, and he does. Grant Waterman is a very experienced referee, so he will know if Rogers is clear or not. I mean, with a lot of fighters, we say, you can be the victim of your own success. If you land a big shot, you go hunting for that shot continually. And that's what King's done throughout that overhand right. But to his credit, he's landed it cleanly. As we see that combination there, he's throwing that kick. And, and, and he's out. Oh, my Rogers God. Is out. Rogers is out. is out. Unreal. Here at the Troxy. King Louis, Louis dominant. King put it all on the table. He put everything on the table. It was a matter of knocking his man out or becoming tired. Because King's mouth was wide open, he was breathing heavy, but he kept on connecting. And he connected once too often for Sean Rogers. But Sean Rogers, wow. You've got to take your hat off coming back from two knockouts. Sean Rogers, yeah, another good guy, which I heard he had a, he, he had a, a lot of good fights coming off his wins, knockouts as well. So he had, he'd been unbeaten as well. And uh, same again, I, I was looking forward to the fight. I didn't feel coming up to the fight that I trained, I, I trained hard, but 
like because I trained differently this time because I didn't know what to expect, you know. It's, uh, I went in there with a dry mouth and everything, you know, I'd, I'd put too much weight on the night before, God knows, you know. Everything just felt, I started panicking the day and I thought, oh, I hope it goes well. And I did gas in the first round, but I made sure I stuck to the fight and I, I knocked him out in, I broke, nearly broke the guy's jaw in two minutes, 23 seconds of the first round. As soon as we went, I just sprinted for him. I knew what I wanted to do. I'd already had a mindset in my head. I looked at the guy across the other side of the cage. I just wanted to go for him. I just wanted to take him out. I just wanted to get, 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 get him out of that ring as fast as I could because I knew, I knew that if I was going to get the second round, it'd be a bit of trouble for me because I knew the way I was feeling as soon as I went into the cage. So I just wanted to destroy him fast. And I just carried on looking for that same headshot, which I dropped him, dropped him twice before I had him up against the cage again. And that's where I stuck to him. And I just carried on punching. I ran right, I ran left, I ran right until I broke him and then just put him straight down, knocked him straight out. Absolutely amazing feeling, man. Every time I win, the feeling is just amazing. That's, that's, that's another reason why being a fighter is brilliant. Do you know what I mean? I absolutely love it. Absolutely love fighting because of the fact that I get well nervous before the fight. I get more confident as I walk up to the cage and I get into the cage and I fight. And I feel once, once you get that win, once you get that win, you feel king, man. That is your cage. And I, it's just an amazing feeling, mate. Amazing. Any fighter that says they don't get nervous before a fight is absolutely bullshit because I get scared, I get nervous, but that gives me, and I also get excited, but it gives me edge to fight harder. The more nervous I get, the more bigger the fight, the more nerves, the more I know that I'm gonna get out from my abilities. That I know I'm gonna fight harder on instinct, which is good. Romy De Silva, which shouldn't have been Romy De Silva, it should have been a, a fight with Andrew Grew. Um, which is a bloody good fighter as well. He actually destroyed someone who fought Mark Weir, so and that would have been a good fight for me. But instead, we had Romy De Silva as a step in for him. So he stepped in, and he come with, then again, it, like that guy hasn't lost him, what, 11 years, I think it is? I'm not too sure if I'm right there, but I think it's around about that mark. Yeah, he's, he's come off knockouts galore as well. So I thought this is going to be a bit of a test, because we never know what to expect on this one. So uh, same again, I got in there. I'll get excited when I got in there. I felt all right for this fight. I just kept my eye on the ball, mate, and I just charged him, put the pressure on him, stuck to him like a rash, and gutted the win out, man. Andy Sledge. Okay, Romy, are you ready? What's on? Well, Southpaw versus Orthodox. This is K1 with MMA gloves. And look at the way that both these fighters have come out. And there's King throwing those huge punches. Oh, and I think rocks on the middle. Big body shot. This Beautiful. is big strikes. Oh, what is that? Oh, a huge oh shot. my God. Rocks his man with an overhand, and that's what we said about King. Those dangerous punches. King. Wow. King hit him with one. He hit that him. And woke him up again. He woke him up again. Oh, and he drops him one more time. Stop boxing. Stop boxing. I said stop boxing. When I say stop, you stop. The reason he didn't stop referees because he doesn't know where he is. De Silva has been knocked from one end of the ring wow. to the other. And Louis King has a phenomenal two, shot. Three, neutral corner, four, five, If I was a judge, gentlemen, six, I'd be holding down the pan and picking seven, up the popcorn. Eight, wow, King is right. awesome. Phenomenal hand speed. And there he is again, there it's that right hand like a piston. He's just got to catch him one more time and this has got to be over. But wow, how is De Silva still standing? Louis King has got one speed and it's 200 miles an hour, gentlemen. Oh! Catch his opponent's legs. Oh, and that's a Shopping nice leg of him to Silva. Wow! King needs to be careful not to burn himself out because this has been 100 miles an hour from the onset. And again, King with a choppy leg kick and Oh, look at those shot. strikes! Every punch is connecting! And every punch with bad intentions. I just hope King hasn't blown himself out. Oh, and another left hook! Remy looks to shoot Four, almost. Wow! Five, six, I've seven, never seen fire like eight, this in a fight up, ever. Wow. If he goes down again, it has to be over. King must be surprised that his opponent's still there. But and not for much time. longer. That, and that is awesome. Wow.
Louis King is a destroyer, plain and simple. There was only one thing on his mind from the second he came in, and that was to get his man out of there as quick as possible. What a destroyer. Well, let's be honest, in this business, you don't get paid for overtime. Man, if Louis King is listening, he should have a nickname, Louis K.O. King, because this man has pure knockout in his hands. And there, here we see the punch is a frantic pace from start to finish. King coming in, just throwing those relentless uppercuts. And that one really rocked his man, I mean, to Silva, oh. and there it was, as you say. It's almost like he knocked him out and then woke him back up with the follow-on. But I mean, to Silva, you've got to take your hat off. How many times do you have to be knocked down and then still come back with strikes? And he took a hellacious beat in there from the hands of King, but still stood in there, hung tough, but too many of those shots, it was accumulation of punches. And Louis King, as we said, one speed, 200 miles an hour. Well, I, after I, I, I said to my instructor, uh, if once I win this fight, I said, I always say I'll knock him out, I'll knock him out first round, I'll knock him out first round. I said, once I win this fight, I even said to Dave O'Donnell, I said, once I win this fight, can I have the shot against Mark Weir? And he went, well, you win this fight, you knock him out, I'll get you the shot against Mark Weir. So I did that and I called him out at the end and I got the fight with Mark Weir, which I was well happy about. I had a call from Dave, Dave O'Donnell like a few weeks after that saying, mate, he said, well done. He said, I spoke to both camps. He said, you got the fight. Mark wants to fight. He thinks, you're, he thinks you're a bloody animal. He wants to get in here with you. So I was well excited, mate. So I just trained, trained and trained and trained. I tried more for this fight than I did any other fight because I knew that this ain't got this, this guy. This is probably the only guy that I fought, which I knew about anyway, about being in the circuit, being in UFC history, fastest knockout in UFC history. And I thought, this is massive. Undefeated for 20 years, 19 wins, no losses, perfect stand-up game. So I thought, this for me would be a massive test. And I fought the guy, and I knocked him out in 18 seconds. But you, know, you never know how the fight's gonna go, do you? Hello, I'm Louis, KO King. I'm 26 years old from Hazelmere. Mark the Wizard Weir, fighting out of Gloucester Range Fighters and Oxford Mixed Martial Arts Academy. People always ask me why I'm smiling. It's because I absolutely love the sport. I have to get in there and knock them out. I've been training exactly the same. I'm the champion. I'm defending it. I've defended it before. He looks really good, uh, Lewis King, but this one again, uh, finished with my hands raised. I've been training three times a day, seven times a week for this fight for a few months, man. There ain't nothing that's going to stop me knocking this guy out tonight. Lewis K.O. King. You don't like going past the first round, be prepared to go second and even third. And don't look for my knockout, be watching out for yours. Watch out for my kicks, I'm watching out for your hands. Okay, Mark, it was weird. You better beware, because I'm knocking you out, mate. The king is coming. The UK one middleweight title is on the line. It's the old versus the new. The legend versus the young. Who will win? We're moments away. Ladies and gentlemen, this contest is for the Cage Rage UK1 Middleweight Championship. Introducing first, the challenger, fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a UK1 fighter with an undefeated record of five wins, no losses. He stands six feet, one inch tall. He weighed in at 83.8 kilograms. Fighting out of Coliseum Gym, Louis K.O. And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a UK one fighter with an undefeated record of 19 wins, no losses. He stands six feet, two inches tall. He weighed into 83 and a half kilograms. Fighting out of OMAA and Gloucester free range fighting. He is your current reigning, defending, undisputed Cage Rage UK one middleweight champion, Mark the Wizard. Win. I love watching both of these guys fight. To see them fighting one another is oh, absolutely it, phenomenal. It's, it's one of these fights oh, where yeah, I wouldn't want to be either one of these Louis in there, Louis but Louis as a spectator, Louis I am absolutely Louis. loving it. So straight away, both guys. Weir finds his range. Little right hook. King Look with a combination, Weir. Bit of a slip there, I think. And look at the stance of Mark Weir straight away. Different 25 to MMA. He's got that lead leg out. And he's looking to throw different kicks. Oh, oh he's out. He's out. Cold. A big left Lewis hook from King. 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 Wow. wow. Unbelievable. He's still out. He's still out. Wow. 
He's not moving at all. Wow, is he? God, I hope he's all right. He's not moving. Mark Weir took a stance, turned, fired that kick, and it was the left hook of Louis King that stopped the Wizard. Absolutely brutal KO. We saw his head bounce off the canvas as he took that shot. A tremendous, tremendous finish. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting our championship belt tonight is Winston Ellis from Pirates of the Caribbean and Batman. And now, referee Andy Sledge calls a stop to this contest at 18 seconds in the very first round, declaring your winner by knockout and new Cage Rage UK1 middleweight champion, Louis K.O. And your runner-up is Mark the Wizard Weir. So my big plans for the future definitely um, is obviously to get to get both belts. I'm gonna be K1 king of both belts, man. So I've got two belts to fill. And my, obviously we've got a two-year gap, which we've based around, which we definitely want to hit the UFC. So UFC will be uh, definitely a goal for the future for us.